Hello and welcome to Organic Edible Garden. It's late summer and now we're going to use our strawberry runners to make new plants for next year. Strawberry plants are only really productive for one or two years. So at this time of year it's really good to take runners from your strongest plants. We're also going to put in some Camellia sinensis to make a tea hedge so I can make my own tea at home. One of the easiest ways to take your strawberry runners is from the ones that have grown on the dirt itself. If we pull them out, they're not really going to have the roots on. We can put them straight into pots and then we can transfer them into the tunnels. And then we have to just put them next into pots. It's really easily done. We just make a hole, pop them in and cover them with dirt again. And afterwards we'll give them a really good water. Sometimes with runners like this, you can get four or five plants from one. Even the end here, it's just started to go green, so we can also pop that in the soil. Sometimes with small end of runners like this, we can also bury them and they'll come through. If you find they pop out, I find these big paper clips, if I open them up and push them into the soil, they help keep it down. Now we're going to leave these strawberries in situ here. They're going to still be connected up to the mother plant and once they've grown and they're strong enough then we can get a pair of scissors and chop them off. These guys I put in about two weeks ago and they've really grown well. It's time to cut them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and separate them by just cutting them off at ground level. Even though we're cutting these runners off, the plant is now strong enough that it can stand on its own. The roots are already coming out the bottom now. These other plants aren't ready to be separated from the mother plants yet, so I'm going to give them a good water. I also really water heavily the new plants we put in today. We're now going to take these guys and take good care of them. We want to put them somewhere by a back door or somewhere where you know you can keep them watered during the warmth of the late summer. And even if you've been growing your strawberry plants in a pot, you can still take the runners in the same way. We're now going to put in our tea hedge of Camellia sinensis. It's the only type of Camellia you can make tea with. You wonder why we even bother putting our own tea plants with tea being so cheap. But if I grow my own hedge and harvest my own leaves, I'll have fresh tea, which is fantastic. After about a year or two, when the plants get big, spring growth will have these lovely new tips, which will pick and will dry for about 24 hours in the shade. After that, we'll get a rolling pin and we'll actually bruise them, put them together, ferment them slightly, and then dry them, and we'll end up with a black tea. You can have your green tea by just drying them only and use it that way. Like all camellias, the tea plant has specific requirements. They do like a slightly acidic soil. They're very hardy, but I'm planting them under the trees here because they do like a bit of protection from strong frosts. It does say they'll go to minus five. The other thing about planting it under the trees here is that it's north facing and they're gonna get some shade during the hot period of summer, which they also like. Another important requirement with camellias is good drainage. If you've got heavy clay soils or bad drainage, especially during winter, adding organic material or even things like pumice and sand really does help. You can see how free draining and friable the soil is. The camellias will love it here. 
and I'm going to plant them reasonably deep and then plant them about a meter apart. These plants can grow up to two meters tall and I don't want that to happen. So what I do is I'll give them a good hard cut back each season. So when it comes to spring and we get our new growth again, they're the tips that we want to make our teas with. At this stage, I don't want leaves like this dragging on the ground, so I will give it a hard prune back of the lower limbs so it'll all grow up. And we've got the bonus of these beautiful white flowers coming out at this time of year, which are great for the bees and the beneficial insects. Camellias, like other plants, also have their problems. This plant here has now got sooty mold. It's caused by an insect. And what we need to do is we need to get rid of that insect so it stops the sooty mold from growing. We'll do that by spraying some neem oil in the evening about two or three times. It should get rid of the problem. If we don't, the sooty mold will affect the taste of the tea. I'm pruning all the lower leaves so they don't sit on the soil. But I'm not going to prune any of the top because I actually want the plant to grow up. It'll eventually form a hedge which will provide good protection for the plants in the garden. But in late spring, I'll give it another hard chop and we'll get all those nice new lush growth coming through. Now all we need to do is give it a really good watering and then I'll put a heavy mulch over the top of it. As far as feeding is concerned, there's probably enough nutrients for it to get started. I don't want to put a high nitrogen fertilizer in now because it'll give a lot of new leaf growth. And I'm worried that if we get a frost over winter, that's the first thing to be burnt. But come springtime, it'll get a lot of volcanic rock and sheep pellets. And like all camellias, they want the soil acidic. So if you feel you've got an alkaline soil, it's time to add things like pine needles, sulfur, or any of those acidifying soil additives.